At least I did. My brother didn't sweat so much. I think there's something wrong with him. <laughs> but I did have a nice time. And uh, hopefully we get to do some more. Amen. Amen. And if y'all don't like my teaching, I'm moving to the Dominican Republic. <laughs> nah, it's too hot over there. Maybe Vandalia. I might just go to Vandalia. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe if we took the whole church, we might be able to double their population. <laughs> Wait a minute. Is there anybody in here from Vandalia? All right, I'm safe then. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, and verse 1. We cannot, let me, let me back up just a little bit. Of all the books of the Bible, the one that the devil attacks the most is not the book of Acts. I know a lot of times we think the devil wants to get rid of the book of Acts because it talks about salvation and maybe wants to get rid of the gospels because it talks about all these miracles and proves that God can do so many things. That is not the, where the largest fight against the church comes from. The biggest fight comes from the book of Genesis because the book of Genesis talks about what God did. And if the devil can get you to believe that God didn't do it, then none of the rest of the Bible matters. There's um, a group of people called Mormons. And they use the same Bible that we have. But they also have another book called the Book of Mormon. And let me just say this to, to the saints. When you testify and when you teach or preach, don't call out other religions. No. I'm not doing this to belittle anyone or to bring down anyone's belief or their faith. I'm not doing that at all. I just want you to understand how some things work. They have a book called the Book of Mormon. Now, if you can accept the Book of Mormon, the rest goes down easy. The truth goes down easy when you can accept that. Because that book undoes some of the things that our Bible does. It'll undo it. So if you can accept that, then you can accept the truth. If you can accept the lie, the truth is easy to accept. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants you to, or wants to discredit the book of Genesis chapter 1 that's where all the trouble is in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 and this is where the greatest fight starts in the beginning God right there now scientists will fight that we know where the beginning was. It was at the Big Bang. They'll fight that. And if they can get you to believe in the Big Bang, then the rest of the Bible doesn't matter. Because if you can't believe that there was a beginning and it was started with God, he was the only thing here, then the rest of the Bible can be found to be false, not true. Now, I'm not just saying that. I, I know a preacher, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, who has argued with me over some of the things in the Bible may not be right, may not have been translated right, so it's not right. And I said, I believe every single period is in there for a reason. Every comma, every punctuation is there. And it's right. I believe every single word is in there. And it's right. I don't believe. I cannot believe that a God that can speak everything into existence 
can't stop a man from perverting his word. I don't believe that. No, no, they translated it. And he wants to argue. Well, when they translated, they did this, that, and that. But that is the problem when you believe the lie, which is God's word has been tampered with by man. When you believe that, then anything else in the Bible that you try to prove can be brought into question. Maybe it's not true. Because what about that one verse that's not true? Oh, yeah, and then they'll do this kind of stuff. Well, you know the stuff that's in italics? You know that, those words that's in italics? That's because somebody added that in there. I said, you can talk all day long, and you're not going to get me to disbelieve the word of God. Every word in it isn't there by God's design. I don't care how much you talk, you're not going to get that from me. You can, might as well find something else to talk about because you are not going to get me to believe that man has perverted the word of God. I don't believe that. So we went on and on and on, and then after a while he just gave up because one thing is for sure. I believe in the beginning God. I believe that. I believe everything else it says after that. The creation was made by God. Now, science may try to prove how God did it. It may be interesting to talk about, but I don't care. In the book of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter... I believe it's chapter 11. By faith. Uh, verse 3. Hebrews 11, 3. By, I mean, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things, so that things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. Man says that the things that are seen are made from things that do appear. But through faith, I understand. How did it get here? By the word of God. I believe God spoke it, and it happened. We have to understand that. We have to believe that. We ha it, let, let, let me just give a natural example if I can. You're very sick. You go to the hospital. The doctor says, I've studied everything that I can about your illness. But we have found out that some of the books that we studied was wrong. I don't know what's right and what isn't. However, I'm willing to do the surgery on you. Would you let them? Now, you're not cutting me open, and the material that you read might be wrong. I need you to know. I, I'm, I'm, is it, we'll do that naturally. We demand perfection from those. I don't want to fly somewhere, and they say, well, have you ever flown before? No, but I did read the book on it. I don't, I don't want that. My next question is, where's the door? Because I'm leaving. There are some things that we demand that the cook be a professional and expert in. In Japan, there's a fish that you can eat. And if you don't cut it right, and you don't cook it right, it'll kill you. And it'll do it quickly. There's, there isn't any, quick y'all, let's rush them to the hospital. Oh no, it ain't like that. By the time they're saying that, you're already gone. But there are folks that will eat it. Would you want a cook 
that said, I've not really cooked this before, but I have read up on it and watched some YouTube videos on how to do it? Absolutely not. But we trust people that don't know anything about God to tell us about God. A scientist will say, no, it was, and name off what it is, and we'll say, well, it must be right because they said so. Haven't been to church, haven't read the Bible, don't have the Holy Ghost. It, see, it would be different if it was somebody that had the Holy Ghost and they were talking off. I could see how folks could follow that because they're following somebody that has the Holy Ghost. They just off. I don't understand how we follow people who don't know anything about God to tell us about God. Let me just sidebar just for a moment. That's including preachers. Just because somebody say they're a preacher doesn't mean they have the Holy Ghost. And just because they know how to preach good doesn't mean that they're preaching truth. I, I was with my first pastor. We were at a council, and the preacher got up, and he leaned over and told my pastor. They had been talking back and forth uh, before service about how, you know, you get folks stirred up when you're preaching. And this brother said, you watch. There's a point where you can get folks so stirred up, they'll listen to anything you say. They'll, they'll shout on anything. And he said, you watch. I'm going to get to a certain point. When I get them right there at that point, I'm just going to say beans and rice. And he said, I'm going to have them shouting. And that preacher got up. And mama, he was going and he was on fire. He was breaking it down. And if folks were standing up clapping, and he, he said, and, and even if all you have is beans and rice, and he just kept saying, beans and rice, beans and rice, ha, beans and rice, ha, beans and rice. <laughs> Folks started shouting. Oh, they were shouting and caring. I just sat there. That's not preaching. That's playing. And, and you look, folks walk away. Ooh, didn't they preach? I wish we could get them at our church. I wish I'd have had some beans and rice. That would have been nice, but no, 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 no. I mean, we'll, if we're not careful, if we are not read up in our Bible, if we are not sure about what we believe, we'll be swept away with beans and rice, beans and rice. Bean, we'll, ooh, he preached, beans and rice. Tell me how to be saved. Tell me how to live holy. Tell me how to be ready for when Jesus comes back. I want to go to heaven, and I know I'm not going to get there shouting. I'm going to get there by being holy. Amen. I, I'm not against shouting. If I wasn't so out of shape and have arthritis in my knee, I'd get busy with the best of you. I've done it. I used to go to church and shout every service. But that was just the, the frosting on the cake. That's all. It's, it feels good. But that's not what's going to get you to heaven. Obedience to the word of God. That's what's going to get us to heaven. And so the devil does not want you to believe all of the Bible. In the beginning, that runs right up against materialism. There are a group of people that believe that all matter is eternal. Everything that you see is eternal always has been always will be so for them when you stand up and say in the beginning they say no no whoa 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 wait now there really is no such thing as a beginning all everything just goes in cycles matter can never be created or destroyed it just simply changes state i mean they come up with all kinds of fancy saying stuff 
what they're saying is there are no such thing as in the beginning because they don't believe in a beginning. They believe everything that is always has been forever. So if you're trying to talk to them, someone that believes that, and you say, well, let's open our Bibles. In the beginning, the first four words, you've lost them. Three words. In the beginning. The first three words. Somebody tricked them into thinking there was no such thing as a beginning. And now, the rest of the Bible doesn't matter. In the beginning, God. That goes against atheists. Atheists don't believe in God. So they may believe there's a beginning, but by the time you get to the fourth word, they, you've lost them. In the beginning, God, atheist, whoa. Or how about this? Polytheist, those that believe in multiple gods, you just lost them. In the beginning, God, that's singular. Or am I mistaken? It's singular. In the beginning, now, let me get technical just for a minute. There are those who believe that um, in the beginning, God, the word God that Moses used was Elohim, which is plural. And so surely there must be more than one God. In the beginning, gods. The way it's said in Hebrew is Bereshith bara Elohim. Elohim, plural. There must be three gods. That's how we know there's a trinity. So you've already offended Trinitarians with in the beginning God because it was not a plural of gods. It was a plural of gods of actions by God. Amen. And that can be easily proven. Who created all things? Really? Go to Colossians chapter 1. I mean chapter... Well, I'll tell you when I get there. I forgot my good Bible at home on the kitchen table. Colossians... Um, let's see. Where is he? Is it chapter 3? Where he says, by him were all things. Chapter 1, verse 16. Thank you, preacher. Um, but we want to go... Where is that? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm talking about. This is in This is in Colossians. What I'm looking for is in Colossians. 6 No, cuz 1:16 Oh, that's cuz I'm in Philippians. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't find it. Uh so actually 16 is what I want, but let's go to 13 so we can see who we're talking about. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So who are we talking about? His dear son. That would be the son of God, right? Jesus. Anybody, anybody dispute that? All right, so we're talking about Jesus. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And we know that we have that through Jesus, right? He's the one that redeemed us. He's the one that has forgiven us. All right. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him. Who's the him? Now, not for by them. It's singular. Singular personal pronoun. By him. We're still talking about the one. Jesus. By him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. 
And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now, he's being very clear when he said all things were made by him. He's been, he's, he, he removes every single possibility of you getting wrong, de deviating from what is right. All things were made by him in the earth, visible and invisible. What's invisible on the earth? S spirit. Where do you see a spirit at? Oh, okay. No, you're good. You're good. All right. I was just seeing if you was... He said a spirit, and I said, where did you see one? He said, it's invisible. All right. Spirits? What spirits? Yours? Well, you can't see your spirit because it's in you. Demons, angels, cherubim, ser well, cherubim, they, they're still in heaven, but angels, fallen angels. How about air? Can you see that? It's there, though, isn't it? Helium, it's there. You can't see it. Well, he said dark matter, but it ain't here on the earth. <laughs> Somebody says Star Trek. <laughs> no. It says all things were created by him, visible and invisible. And I said, what are the invisible things? The spirit that's in you, you can't see it anyway. It's not because it's invisible, it's because it's in you. Just like your lungs, I can't see them. They're not invisible, but I can't see them because they're in you. But there are things that are, is around, like the air that you breathe. You can't see it. You can only see what it does. You can only see the, like if it stirs up dust, you can see the dust, but you can't see the air. Spirits, angels, you can't see them unless God makes them visible. Like in the book of Genesis, when the three angels came before Abraham, and one of them was the Lord. He made himself visible to Abraham. But he's an invisible being. Matter of fact, doesn't the Bible say that God is invisible? All right. He's a spirit. You can't see a spirit. If you don't believe me, ask Brother Christian. He, didn't you just say that? It's official. Amen. He made everything visible and invisible. Thrones, that means that he didn't just make it and then let somebody else take over. Everybody that's in power is there because God said so. He did that. He made it so that there would be kingdoms and power. People are mad, got a lot of wind in their jaws over President Trump. He's there because God said so. You want to fight against him? You're fighting against what, the plan of God. You, you, you can't fight God. Y'all, we need to get together and pray him out of office. No, you don't. You can't fight the hand of God. What I'm saying is the truth. We, we, we picked the wrong battles to fight. That man is doing what God has established. So is Vladimir Putin. So is Queen Elizabeth. All of them that is in power are there because God puts one up and he takes another down. God does that. We think that it is us. We voted you in and we'll vote you out. No, you didn't. It may have been done through a vote, but God laid it on the heart of those to vote. God put it in their heart to do what they're doing. Even evil people that get up and take over a country through bad means, killing folks and genocide and all of that, infanticide. All of this is because God has established it. We don't understand why. We don't even see the whole plan. But you can't deny that God set this up. It's the way he said it was going to be. And it's all for one purpose so that I can have a people that will be my bride, that will be my companion. But I'm going to make sure that this 
is the right people. You think God just did that on a whim? Somebody told me, well, God can just make you live right. Yes, he can. He made angels, and he made them perfect. And one-third plus one fell. And they were made perfect. Lucifer was the morning star. He was beautiful. He was perfect in all his ways, perfect in wisdom. All right, so now we've got Jesus made everything, right? All right, well, then go to the book of Proverbs. the scripture I want somebody if you can who's got electronic you do look up the phrase um, look up the scripture where it talks about the seas not overpassing their bound by the what eight all right all right that, but that's not what I want I just know what's in there All right, now, Proverbs 8 and verse number 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Who hates it? No, 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 no. He just told us in chapter, I mean, in verse 12. I, wisdom. Right? This is wisdom speaking. All right. Evil, the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Who hates it? Wisdom. Counsel is mine. Who does counsel belong to? Wisdom. All right. I'm, I'm beating this horse for a reason because I want you to see what's going on. This is wisdom talking. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. This is wisdom talking. Yes, sir. He said, isn't this the wisdom of God? It doesn't say that. We'll see. We'll see. I'm getting somewhere with it, and it'll answer your question. All right. Verse 15, by me kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Who, do we, who are we talking about? Wisdom. If any man lacks wisdom. All right. We're talking about wisdom. Now, I understand what you're saying. Is this the wisdom of God? That would make it be... Um, a quality of the way God thinks. But this isn't acting like this. This is acting like it's its own person. All right? Uh, what do you mean by it can be a two-way street? They are all plain to him that understandeth and write to them that find knowledge. Um, in verse 8, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. Um, but this is all wisdom. This is wisdom speaking. All of this. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures now the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way 
before his works of old. Now, what is he talking about in the beginning and his works of old? The creation of the world. Before God did all of this, it said the Lord possessed me like it's a different person altogether. Right? But then if we go on, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. Where there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth. Brought forth what? Everything that we see. He's talking about creation. I brought forth. Then, he goes on, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depths, when he established the clouds, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him and I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him. Now we've got wisdom creating. We've got Jesus creating. We've got God creating. Which one of them was it? Yes, sir. He said, can I say that wisdom is another manifestation of God? Well, in all fairness, he said like Jesus or like the Holy Ghost, in all fairness, God's wisdom is so far beyond our wisdom that God's wisdom can act like it's its own person. You can't. You get excited when you come up with something clever. We Don't we? We, we, are, we are like, Guess what I guess what I told so and so. We we really done something. When somebody did something bad, I told them, invest in gold. Now look, they're rich. Like we really did it. Anything that we do is happenstance. If God didn't give it to you, you wouldn't have it. But God's wisdom is so powerful. I don't want to say powerful. His wisdom is so great, it's like its own person. That's just something hard for us to, to grab a hold of. But God is, the Bible says that the Lord said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. We cannot begin to even think about God in the way that God is. We can't do it. We try. And what did he do when he got here? He had to give us parables. A sower went forth to sow. What is, he, what is he doing? Trying to break it down to a level where we can get it. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a, a man, a king who had a field, or a king who, a husbandman, that he just uses all of these different examples to try and describe what he's doing in a way that you can get it, but you can't grasp heavenly things with an earthly mind. We just can't. When Paul went to heaven... What did he say? I saw things not lawful for man to speak. Couldn't even talk about it. We can't begin to understand God. And so we've got God creating. We've got wisdom creating. We've got Jesus creating. That's why in the beginning, God, plural. What was it? A plural of actions. Not a plural God. Wisdom wasn't a God too. All of this God put to use to make what he's made. And more than that. Because in the book of Hebrews it said it was made by his word. So his word is so powerful that he can speak and it happened. But get this. He speaks but doesn't have a mouth. Does the spirit have a mouth? And yet God is so powerful that he can speak without a mouth and things happen. He formed man out of the dust of the earth. And he doesn't even have hands. 
When you form something, you touch it with your own hands. God didn't even have hands. And yet he did it anyway. We can't understand what it is, who it is that we serve. We don't understand it. You know what it is? All an act of faith. God said it. I believe it. That's it. I believe it. I wish it settled it. Somebody said that settles it, but it don't settle it. It settles it in me. But it doesn't settle it with everybody else. Because some folks will get the Holy Ghost and come in and, and in the beginning, God, well, yeah, now wait a minute, Pastor. Have you heard about, and then come name off some, well, Dr. Johnson has a book out, really good book. You need to read it. No, I don't. I need to read my Bible. So in the beginning, God goes against atheists. It goes against those that believe in multiple gods. One God. I am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 56, where is it? I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me, there is no Savior. Isaiah 43, 11. I'm sorry, I'm all over the off, off topic here tonight. Isaiah 43, 11. I, uh, no, 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 let's go up, let's, let's go up to 10. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Now, we are witnesses to this. We are witnesses to the fact that he is the I am. That he is who he says he is. We, we believe that, right? We understand that I am he. And we also know that before him, there was no other God. We also know that after him, there was no other God. All right? The very next verse says, I... Now, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. That is a single person, personal pronoun, isn't it? Isn't that singular? I, not, not we. I. I, comma, even I. See, he's being very clear. When God repeats himself, it's because this is... Pay close attention. It's very important. I, even I, am the Lord. Beside me, there is no Savior. Right? Beside me, there is no Savior. Go to the book of Luke. <clears throat> yes, sir. Exactly. Let me, let me read it. I see you getting excited, preacher. Hold on. <laughs> He said that somebody used this very verse to try and prove the Trinity. In Luke chapter 2, verse 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. What is he? A Savior, right? But in Isaiah he said, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. So how can he be the Savior? And yet later on in the book of Luke, we have Jesus being born and saying, I am the Savior. They said, unto you is born a Savior. Well, wait a second. I thought, I thought Jehovah was the Savior. He said, Jesus is Jehovah. So you can't, you can't trust preachers. They let the cat out the bag. Which... He had many names. But now we have one name. One. Unto you was born. Now wait a second. Let's go, let's go up. Verse 10. And the angel said unto them, Who is talking? An angel. 
Now we know the ones that fell from heaven that are not right are no longer called angels. They're called demons, evil spirits. So if an angel said it, then this is from God. He also said in Isaiah that no other will take my glory. And yet we have here uh, folks falling down and worshiping Jesus. The wise men came and they worshiped him. And we are told that no, you, there is no other God beside me and you're not to worship any other God but me. And yet we have them worshiping Jesus. Why? Because Jesus was a body that God made and then got down inside of it his own self. If you look at how um, scientists take air samples. When Chernobyl, when uh, Chernobyl uh, melted down, and I think it's in Priot or Priop or some of this, it's in it's in the Ukraine. I can't think of how to pronounce the city. Pri Priop, I think, or Priop, 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 something like that. I, I I can, but when when it when it exploded when it melted down and exploded they needed to know how much radiation was in the air you fly airplanes in with containers that drag in the air and it captures the air they take that air back and they sample it and they say this is how much radiation there is we've got samples air samples did they take all the air from there? No, they took a little bit. But that little bit that they took contained everything that all the rest of the air around there contained, didn't it? That's how they know that they got an accurate sample. We do the same thing with lakes. When we want to find out what contaminations are in the water, they'll take a jar and they dip in it and they close it up and they take it back. They don't have to take the whole lake back. They just take a small sample because that lake contains a little bit of everything that's in that water. That's all God did. Somebody told me one time, so you telling me a God that's infinite got down all down inside of a little body? Then where, where was all? Where, he wasn't nowhere else but in that body? I said, in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In him dwelt everything that God was. He just put a sample of himself inside that body. Every bit of it was what God was. Same love, same compassion. Everything that God was, was in that body. Not the whole lake, just the sample. Not all of the air, just a sample of it. The difference is, God's spirit is so powerful, it has a name of his own. We have, we have uh, windstorms that come through and will knock things down and all of that. We don't remember the name of them. They don't even name them. Tornadoes will come through. They don't name a tornado. It's just strong wind that came through and knocked down some buildings. But hurricanes, hurricanes are so powerful and do so much damage, they give them names so they don't forget what that hurricane was. It's the same thing with God. He was so powerful. He gave his, he gave his body a name, Jesus. And later on it says, neither is there any other, for there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Why? Because it was so powerful. What got down inside of that body, he had to give it a name that could take care of everything that was wrong with us. In the beginning, they had to call Elohim. Later on, he tells Moses, 
My name is Jehovah, and by that name was I not known. So now he reveals himself through a different name. In another place, he's El Elyon. Another place, he's El Shaddai. Every time God dealt with man, he gave them a name for them to understand who it was they were dealing with. If you were at war, you called on Jehovah Shalom. If you were sick, you called Jehovah Nisi. I'm, not, I'm just saying that. I, I don't know for sure on that one. I can't, does anybody know what it was? If you're sick, who you called on? Anybody know? How about if you were broke and needed help financially? Your fields were not growing like they were supposed to. Who was it that you were supposed to call? No, 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 no. They didn't know no Jesus. Who, was they, who were they calling? Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah, he's my provider. All right. So we, what, what about when you're sick? Come on, nurse. Oh, wait. Oh, you looking it up? Wait a second. You just got real sick real fast. You don't have the internet. Now who you going to call? That's all we got now. He said, Jesus. Back then, they had to know, who am I talking to? That's why when Paul was on the road to Damascus and the Lord struck him down, he said, who art thou, Lord? He didn't know. It wasn't that he didn't know the Lord. He didn't know what name should I call you because I don't know who it is I'm dealing with. Come on, throw it on me, sister. Jehovah, Jehovah Rafi. He's the one that heals you. Amen. But what about when you're hungry? No, 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 no. El Shaddai. That's the one, that's the one that protects you and feeds you. Yeah, El Shaddai. It was, it was like a father that holds a child in his chest and, and takes care of him. It, here's, the, here's the thing. Even Paul was confused. Who am I dealing with here? What personality? What I'm not sure the right way to say it, but like, what angle? Where are you coming? Where, how are you coming at me, Lord? What, who, which one have I offended? What name should I use? All he said was, I'm Jesus. That's the only name you need to know now. Jesus. You sick? Call Jesus. You lonely? Call Jesus. You hungry? Call Jesus. You need money? No, get a job. You need wisdom? Call Jesus. You need strength to go through your test? Call Jesus. You don't have to even think about it now. Sometimes, when it's in you, right. I was in Indianapolis and I saw one of the saints walking down the street. And I thought, I'm going I'm to I'm mess with him. I'm going to get him. He didn't see me. So I snuck up behind him and stuck my finger in his back and I said, give me all your money. And he said, Jesus. <laughs> he scared me. I said, hey, 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 oh, brother. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Without even thinking, the first thing he yelled, Jesus. He didn't have to stop and think, wait, now I'm being robbed. Who, which one of the names should I? He didn't have to do all of that. It's just Jesus. Who was it that created everything? Jesus. Who was it that was in the beginning? Jesus. He was there in the beginning. And then he goes on further. And the Bible says, his word, his word is so strong, it's a person all by itself. In 1 John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word, wait a minute now, hold on. If the word was God, and it was with God, how can something be with him and be him? Because his word is so powerful that it's like a person all by itself. And then later on, and the word was made flesh. Now, in the beginning was the word, in the beginning God, so God was his word, and then his word was made flesh and dwelt 
among us. How can you not get that straight? All of it is him. All of it was made by him. And then the time is coming in the book of First or Second Corinthians, it talks about how the time is coming when God will, that position will be put under God and God will become all in all. The role of the son is going to go away. It's not eternal. I know some folks say that the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost are co-equal, co-eternal. No, they're not. The son is going to come to an end. So how could he be eternal? He's not. How can anything be equal with something infinite? That was, that was what the mistake the devil made. He, even he had enough sense to know, I'm not more than God, and I can't be more than God. He said, I will be like the Most High. He had enough sense to know that God was all. I just want to be like him. He wanted to be the son of God. Isn't that what he was saying? I will be like the most high. And what was Jesus? He was the son of God. And now what are we? Beloved. Now are we become the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. What you see right now is not what I am. What you see right now is not what I'm going to be. I might be ugly. I might have warts all over my body. I might have bald spots in my head. Nose crooked and funny looking. Lips all messed up. Feet don't work right. Knees knobby and bow legged. I might be all of that right now. But you, all you seeing is what the house is. But it doth not yet appear what I shall be. One day, when he comes back, I'm going to get rid of this dirty, nasty old house and get a brand new house made in the heavens. All we can do now is to hold on by faith to what we have. In the beginning, I believe it. I believe there was a beginning. In the beginning, God. I believe there was a God in the beginning. I believe he was there before the beginning. In the beginning, God created. I believe he made all of it. How? By just speaking his word through faith. I believe God. But not because he proved anything to me. God didn't show me what he did. God didn't show me how he did it. God's not trying to give me some explanation in an earthly way for me to grasp it. He didn't do all that. All he said was, believe me. That's all. Believe me. Believest thou that I am he? Isn't that what he asked the man? Believest thou? That's all he wants. Just hang on to him. Believe him. Oh, I'm out of time. <laughs> in the beginning God created that denies fatalism fatalism is the belief that things all things happen by chance it also denies evolution because evolution says things just evolved into what they were yeah you're right brother he said it's crazy it is. How can dirt and water, because that's all it was, dirt and water make complex molecules, lightning strike it, and somehow it comes to life. And then that life eventually turns into a one-celled organism that eventually turns into multi-celled organisms that eventually turn into fish that eventually grow legs eventually loses its tail and grows a long tail and eventually crawls up into trees and then after a while comes down out the trees and stops walking on four legs and starts walking on two and then eventually becomes self-aware and after a while becomes man that is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Wait. And don't, we don't have any proof. Just take our word on it. We're scientists because we say so. My question is, can you in the laboratory 
make dirt, and I don't care, pour complex molecules in there, I don't care. Pour all that in there and keep hitting it with lightning. Can you make life come from that? Absolutely not. There's only one thing, one person that can create life, and that's God. In the beginning, God created. Every single piece of life we have, where did it come from? God. None of it was by chance. Now, man has evolved from being a perfect or being an innocent creature into a pretty evil one. But that is not because of God. No. Nowhere have they ever found where an animal a dinosaur, any fossil or anything proved that one thing jumped from one species to another where a fish turned into a four-footed creep. They got no proof nowhere, but they want you to believe it. Because if you can believe that, then in the beginning God created, strike it out the Bible. Yes, ma'am. She said somebody told her that they came from monkeys and she said monkeys are being born every day. Yes, they are. So are people. Where did, where did monkeys come from? Well, he said, why are they not evolving anymore? Things are evolving. Life evolves. Oh, well, now, that, now, now you don't went to meddling. Things are evolving. Germs evolve. That's why we go to the hospital and there are certain bugs that they say are super bugs. What we have can't do anything with it because it has adapted and evolved to be resistant to all of the things that we can put on it to kill it. It will evolve. It'll evolve. I understand how that happens. I mean, we are putting all kinds of antibiotics in the food of our animals. There is bacteria in the ground. Animals go to the bathroom on the ground and that antibiotic that's in their urine gets on the ground and it starts to kill off the, the bacteria that's even in the ground. But some of it somehow manages to survive. And when it does, it's resistant to that now. And then eventually, somebody's walking around out in the field, playing around with dirt, picks them up and throw it, rub their eyes, and now they got that bacteria in them. Then when they go to the doctor and try to get some antibiotics, it doesn't work because it has evolved in such a way that it no longer will be killed by those antibiotics. Matter of fact, if y'all ain't never had confidence in God, you better start getting it now because they are to the point now, pharmaceutical companies now are at the point to where they're starting to stop producing new antibiotics because as fast as they make it, by the time they get it out on the market, six months later, the germs are resistant to it. Bacteria isn't affected by it. And they're saying it's a losing battle. We, it cost us billions of dollars to produce a new antibiotic, and we make millions off of it. It's not profitable. So they're stopping that. Some stuff's going to start coming through. And if you don't have faith in God, if you don't know Jesus to be your healer, some stuff going to start taking us out. You better, you better have your confidence and your trust in him. I'm not against doctors. I'm really not. I love Dr. Moses. I'm not against doctors. I think God has given those men wisdom. I think he has given them a unique understanding of how things work. And they use that to help people. I'm not against that. But all they can do is help your body do what it's supposed to do. They can't cure you. You get cancer, they can't cure it. They can cut it out, but they're not going to cure it. There's things that doctors will say, they scratch their head. I don't understand what it is. I don't know how it's working. I don't know how to stop it. And they'll have to tell the families. If you know how to pray, this would be a good time to do it because we've done all we can do. There are people that have died and they never figure out what happened to them. I know what happened. God said, that's it. You can go to the doctor if you want to. But when God said, that's it, it's over, brother. It's over. And 
nothing's going to stop the hand of God. Amen? Amen? One more. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That denies pantheism, which is the, doctor of, or the doctrine of God and the universe are one. I'll tell you who, you, who does this. Um, I think it's the Unitarians. They say that um, God is like the ocean and when the waves splash up against a rock and it splinters up, that's us. And eventually when we die, we go back to the great ocean, which is God. Like that's, that's kind of crazy. I ain't going back to nothing but heaven and I ain't been there yet. So I don't know how I can get back there because if I was there, I'd have never left. Mm-mm. Hoyloism is the doctrine that matter and life are one. Now, how they come up with these crazy notions is nothing but the devil. But if one thing the devil wants to do, if he could get rid of Genesis 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, if he could get rid of those first three, four verses in the book of Genesis, he'd be happy. Because then your faith means nothing. Your confidence in God means nothing. Hold on to it. Don't listen to these crazy ideas that people have trying to make you think, well, we, the scientists have finally figured it out. Scientists can't figure it out. They may get a better understanding of how some things work, but as far as the heavens are above the earth, so are God's thoughts above man's thoughts and his ways above man's ways. You will never understand how God does things until you get to heaven. I would hate to find out how he does it on my way to the lake of fire. I want to get to heaven and I ain't sure what I'm going to do when I get there. I don't know how happy I'm going to be. I do know that um, any crown that I have, I'll throw it at his feet. Tell him thank you. Worthy is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. I'm going to be, I'm going to be dancing, shouting. No, I'm, I'm talking about having legs. I ain't even going to have them. I'm going to have something else. Something better than that. Whatever it is I have, I'm going to be using it to praise God. Amen? All right. Any questions? Comments? Anything? Yes, ma'am. Yes, she said that they did try to recreate lightning and water in the, in the dirt, and it didn't work. They, they took it a step further. They poured all of the things in there, what they call the primordial soup, all of the complex molecules that are necessary for life, and they kept striking it with lightning in a sealed container. And after a while, something happened to one of the molecules, and they said, see, there you go. That's how it happened. And they said, wait a second, you know, y'all, you did this for like 60 days and it didn't really make any life. It just one molecule changed into a different. I heard it described like this. What it takes for life. Um, we have to have DNA and RNA to make life. And RNA reads the DNA and knows what to do with it. It's like a DVD player and a DVD disc. So RNA is what they put in this water to try and make life, striking it with lightning. And one of the scientists said, it is the same as taking a DVD player and then a whole bunch of parts, I mean taking a DVD disc and then taking a whole bunch of parts and trying to figure out how to make the player, but the instructions on how to make a DVD player is on the DVD. How do you read it without the player? You can't. How can RNA know what to do without the DNA? And he can't have DNA without RNA. It's, it's like it takes both, and one needs the other, and the other had to be first. The RNA had to be first, before the DNA, and the RNA doesn't know how to make DNA until DNA tells it what to do. So how could it even make it? They said, no, this is not possible. Even some of the ones that are strongly, I heard one man who is a strong proponent. He is 
a staunch atheist and completely in favor of evolution. And find, I heard him in an interview and he said, the man asked him about this deal of how can one exist and create the other, but it needs the instructions from the other first to be able to do it. How can it do that? Then he said, he said, I don't know, and I don't think the science will ever be able to explain that. However, I would rather believe that an alien seeded the earth with life than to believe God did it. Now you talk about staunch in your belief and then we'll say that we're narrow-minded? Are you kidding me? I'm narrow-minded and you would rather believe space aliens came and put life on the earth, but I'm narrow-minded because I believe God did it. Like, come on, man. <laughs> yes, that, that's totally crazy. Anything else? All right. No service tomorrow. Enjoy your families, and we'll, we'll see each other Sunday. If the Lord comes before then, I'll see you on the other side if you've been living right. If not, I tried. Yes. If you don't make it on that great getting up day, then it means you went the other way. Amen. All right. Stand on your feet.